Oh, nothing's easy. Why did I film this shenanigans? Now, clutch and brake at the same time. So clutch in. Yep, that'll do it. Well, it's first time out with the tractor. Got a big delivery coming and I managed to swap out the bucket, which was far easier than the old tractor. It's a Euro 8, I think it's called. So it's a little bit like the Norcar, the loader that we had. Hooks under, slots in, and then there's a pin there, or two pins. So I've managed to quickly get that done. The driver said he was about five minutes away. Well, it, he had 10 minutes, now he's five minutes away. So all being well, this should lift our pallets. I've ordered, I think, a ton of pig feed, so. So as if by magic, here it is. Hopefully, I can just lift them off one at a time. This guy's just reminded me that last time, if he remembers uh, when we had the smaller tractor, we had, to, we had the forks on, we had to split it over two or three pallets. I've ordered it in bulk bags because I was getting fed up with all the plastic. Actually, I'm getting fed up with just commercial feed. We're going to try and think outside the box on that. But for now, um, we're buying in the pellets as normal, but at least we can get them in bulk bags. I think they're 500 kilo bags. So. I'm not sure I was expecting that. It's not like a typical bulk bag. Hey, seemed all right, didn't it? Better than the last one. Well, that's all right. Yeah, it's not like a normal bulk bag, it's only got one hook. I guess that's so... Well, I don't know why that is. Maybe that's how feed comes. But it seemed okay. I'll stick it down here for now. So much more stable with a full load. It doesn't help that I've got a massive ditch that still hasn't been filled in. This trench is collapsed after the freeze. All the backfill was frozen, so it's now a bit smaller than it should be. Chewing the ground up a bit more with these tires. I just need to move the sheep trailer and then we have a lot more space to play with. I'm going to move the sheep trailer. Well, we now realise the negative side of bulk bags. How did that even happen? Tiniest snag on the bottom. Ugh. I could have just chucked it on a pallet, but this I can sweep up. That's just a pain. Oh, nothing's easy. Why did I film this shenanigans? Must be that. All right, well, I salvaged most of it but I'm definitely going to bring a pig or two up here. That can be supper.
Did the job though, didn't it? Absolutely no problem lifting that. It'll lift 800 kilo on the front and something like two, two tons on the back. Now the 800 kilo is probably not at full height. So moving pallets around and bulk bags, but unloading vehicles, ideally not. But anything heavier than this, usually will arrive with a high ab, like building materials and things like that. Certainly not as easy to manoeuvre as it was to have in the little loader. But we did all right. I'm afraid, pigs, that it's kind of uh, teasing you a bit. So like having the dessert trolley right by your table without being able to eat it. Now I would let them out to tidy up up there. But unfortunately, these guys all got out this morning and already finished off a bag of feed and the goat feed. Hence why it's like straw bale Fort Knox here at the moment. They, they, I mean, this is only temporary. They came in when it was snowing. Um, and I thought it was just kind of an experiment to see who fared better, these four or the four outside. I think both works, it's just a little bit more from a human effort, to, <laughs> it's a bit more work getting down there. Whereas these guys have got automatic drinker and I can feed them in one go and it's just a little bit easier. But um, I don't know, jury's out whether we overwinter the, any pigs we do have in a straw barn or whether we keep them out. They're only on mud now, so mud versus straw, don't know. But as far as why we've got a bigger tractor now, where we were struggling with our little blue, who was perfect for every, most of the stuff we needed. But what we need to do this year is a load more work on the farm, which requires more power, more weight. Uh, and therefore things like laying pipes, which is, you know, pulling pipes through um, all of the fields down to, well four fields there's probably about 600 meters worth of pipe to to get laid also we need to do a little bit more fencing whether we use this at all for that i don't know uh, because obviously tom has all the gear on the back of his ready but also we need to get our track built and grading out gravel and stuff like that this is going to be far better the bucket on it is much much bigger and lastly we need to work on getting the fields a little bit opened up. So either with the mole plow, uh, hopefully it's gonna be the same uh, attachment that I'm buying, which is like a pipe layer mole plow type um, soil slitter. So that's just gonna help break up the soil on some of the impacted areas of the fields so we can then start sowing more herbal lays like this stuff here, which I still haven't got around to sowing in the autumn. So hopefully it's held up absolutely fine and we're gonna get that in the ground. That's got more like herbal lays and wildflower and stuff. And a lot of those species will get down in to the soil, the deeper soil, start breaking it up and loosen it. Uh, and then everything just gets a little bit more healthy. Cause at the moment there's only about this much soil, which is usable by plants. Uh, and therefore only that much is being grazed. Whereas down on the bottom on the flood meadows, the soil is so much better that the grass can get down deeper, grow better, more grazing, stays um, green longer uh, in the dry spells. So all in all, we know what we've got to do. We just needed the tool for the job. While we're having a walk around, goats are bedded down. We've switched, pigs were in here. The girls did an amazing job of mucking all this out. So we need to start getting this down onto the compost muck pile, start getting it worked through so that hopefully we can get this used this year. A lot of this, you know, this was a hundred cows in there at one point. A lot of it, when you dig down, you get into stuff that's 20 year old cow muck. So uh, that could probably, I don't know, it's probably just ready to use, I guess. But anyway, all of it's been mixed up with the pig stuff and the straw, it's all gone down and we're gonna be using that hopefully later in the year. So, one, two, three, four, five. These girls are ready to kid very soon. Well, we're at two weeks off now, aren't we, Fluffy Buffy? She is an absolute monster. Look at the size of her. You can see them kicking away as well. So I don't know how many she's gonna have, but she's certainly the one that looks the closest. This one, I'm not 100% sure is pregnant at all. Um, don't know. I might just be misreading it, but she just looks like a little tubby. 
a tubby goat rather than a pregnant goat, but we'll see, we'll wait and see. Either way, the due date for these five girls is between the 31st of Jan and mid-Feb. So the plan is, if we do keep them down this end of the barn, is we'll split them up, and I think I'm gonna use these cubicle stools uh, from the dairy cows, and I'll try and use hurdles or pallets, and we'll ma make those up into pens. So that way we've got one, two, and I'll probably use three, four, five along this side. That just means for the first couple of days, they can bond and then go into one mixed pen. And I think, well, I'm talking from no experience at all, but hopefully that'll work fine. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> she's wider than she is long. Maybe in the comments, uh, give us your best guess. We've got five goats here. The average is twins, but they can have three, four even. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I'm hoping twins all round. That should make things a little bit more hassle-free. Now, Fluffy, you can't come off. You're gonna break those sheep hurdles. I might also look at giving them a mineral drench soon, like this week, just to make sure they're on top of it. I've given them a horse licks, which is down here, which they're pretty much through. Goats need copper, something that sheep licks don't offer. So that's why a lot of times it's horse or calf products, I think, that are used for goats. But they'll go to town on this when they need it. But another way to do it instead of the licks is to give them a drench, which is like a mineral boost. Um, so it's all internal. Or then the other option is like a free choice minerals, which is arguably the best route, which is when you have all the different minerals in like a little flappy box and they can just get what they need. But I haven't got time for that right now. So licks it is. We've had a few coughs and colds, which I initially I was really worried about, but actually I mean, spoken to a few breeders when it's cold weather, they have the sniffles sometimes and it clears up. So they haven't heard any coughs lately, but hopefully they'll be all right. The opposite is true for the pigs where very, very few ailments ever. Um, isn't that right, boys? So the only thing that we've ever had, touch pig, um, go wrong with the pigs is just the occasional parasites, external parasites. And um, we've wormed, we've never wormed the pigs, although when you do a treatment for uh, the lice or, um, that they can get, I think that's internal treatment as well. However, when I've done a fecal egg count on Matilda and also the piglets, I sent that off to the lab and there was very, very, very little uh, to worry about at all. So there was no need to treat them for anything. So as a rule of thumb, pigs are harder work to look after, more expensive to feed, but seem to be a far more robust animal and less to go wrong. This, this is Runty. Runty was the, the little tiny one way back when they were all born back in the summer, who we had to feed on goat's milk and kind of give a boost to. But now he's kind of leader of the pack. Anyway, let me give you a little look. I was gonna say, let me give you a look at the sheep, but unfortunately, they've uh, just left this paddock and gone back up. It's a few days on now, and we've been not filming too much because it's just absolutely miserable lately. But we're up doing the lambs now, so I'll give you a bit of an update on them. So we're over feeding this lot, they're 18 over here. Ideally, we wanna get them back in with the ewes because it would be good to not have to worry about coming down here every day. But before we can do that, we need to pull the rams out. So that's still an and ongoing. And spray paint them. And spray paint them. That's neat. We just need to mark up the ewes because some of these are getting bigger and bigger. It's just, it's actually easier to tell with the clins, but with the South Downs, they all look a bit similar. Come in and um, grab half a bale off here. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Got it? I'm not that You can do it. I can't. 
<laughs> you look like you're playing the accordion. Take that. <laughs> Come on. We've had a bit of a pig move around as well, so the gilts are back in with Matilda. They'd already uh, weaned off her, so there's no chance they'd try and feed from her. It's just one less thing to feed and water now. So these are actually piglets from last year, believe it or not. And they are onto a fresh bit of grass, which they're soon churning up. All of this can be planted into a herbal lay next year as part of our sustainable farming scheme that we're on now. I think they were expecting food. So it'll be like a herbal lay, wildflower, sunflowers, other stuff that we can grow all year, uh, all early season, and then we'll put the animals in there afterwards to, to chew through it. We're also going to be planting a, a like a rooting mix, which is a, a uh, sorry, they've got enough, like a pig rooting mix, which is root veg and chicory and all sorts in there that they can then, all right, that they can then root up and feed from. So rather than just pigs being on grass, which that they chew through, but they don't really use the full potential. There's certain seed mixes which are better for them. So there'll be strips of this, strips of that. So this is just so compacted, this ground. It's got about two or three inches of, of soil, topsoil on it. And then it's just a hard pan layer. So this needs a bit of work, but it's gonna get there one day. And someone is learning to drive. Uh, you're gonna have to slide your seat forward a bit because you might need pedals. I thought we were a few years off this, but it's come pretty, come round. <laughs> Looks like we're being chauffeured now. Oh, Engine. No, you gotta, when you turn the key like that, you need to hold the key turned until it's started. Try again. Do I still search the clutch? No. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you're in neutral. So turn the key. No, you're fine. D don't. Yeah, that's it. It let go of the key once it started. Yeah. Okay. okay. So clutch, clutch, clutch down. Okay, <laughs> we have to put some blocks on those wheels. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, a little bit of accelerator. Come off the clutch. Too much, too much, too much, too much, way too much. Okay. Off, come off the clutch, go slowly. Okay, now on with the accelerator. Too much. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank goodness for low range. Get, hang on, you can go to the end and then turn around. Oh. No. Okay. Slowly. Okay, straighten her up now, straighten her up. Watch the dog. Okay, we're going up to the hay feeder. All right, I've put a hurdle in the way so it keeps to the right a bit. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, that's it, keep straight, watch that side. Okay, now over to the hay rack, straight ahead. Just stay in first gear, we'll do gears another day. Slowly, oi, slow down. I'm good at driving. Yeah, okay, now cl clutch and brake at the same time, so clutch in. Yep, that'll do it. Do I want anything? Do I let go? Is it neutral? Yeah. There we go, and turn it off. Alright, go and do that hay, I'm going to sit and watch you. What? I'm retiring. 